My name's Amy, and that was Higher Language, if you didn't guess. Um, the music was written by Bran, Ollie, and Rachel, and the lyrics were written by me. Um, when Bran first came to me and said that the album was, uh, the theme was going to be voice, the first thing I thought about was, um, well, voices and things that we can't really understand. So then I combined those two ideas and created my lyrics. Um, when I first heard the music, I was gobsmacked. 
um, <laughs> everybody was dancing in the music tech room, and I thought, I've got to write lyrics to this. <laughs> oh dear. But uh, things sort of came together in the end. Uh, thanks! Um, on the night, uh, I remember recording my song at 4 a.m. Um, while Bran was asleep in the corridor and Rachel was designing the cover for our lovely album. Uh, so me and Ollie spent I don't know, a couple of takes and it was done. I was quite happy. Um, I am... <laughs> I absolutely loved this task and I had so much fun. I can't th thank these guys enough for this opportunity. I really hope you enjoy listening to it as we enjoyed making it. So I'll hand you over to Meg now. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> right, uh, the next song is a song called Should Say, uh, which is a song that I wrote predominantly on the day of the recording. Um, I was one of the very lucky ones that got to sort of record this song at a reasonable hour. So mine was while it was still light and nobody was asleep. Everybody was really up for it, it was good. Um, but um, I had quite a lot of lyrical help on this because there's a middle eight section that I was having real trouble filling with anything. And the lovely Rupert Brown, who unfortunately couldn't be here today to perform with us, he came up with a solution which today will be performed by the lovely Gregory Burke because he's <laughs> filling in for a roof of brown. So I hope you enjoy it, I should say. Hey, 
I'm Erin, and the next song is Do You, Can You, Will You? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, my memories from the day and night and early hours of the morning um, were getting into the room, and I was having to contest with three other computers whilst I was trying to sing my song into my microphone and stuff, with them going click, 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 tap, tap, tap. Oh, yeah, that's great. I did. All the time. So me going, right. Okay, I just want one minute of silence, please. Okay, one minute, just so I can record my chorus, please. Which eventually happened. Um, things that I'll always remember are um, Rupert's snoring. Not going to forget that in a hurry. Uh, sleeping outside the science room with uh, these guys coming in about, you know, half three in the morning going, where are you, Aaron? Where are you? Where are you? I'm here, trying to sleep. But yeah, um, this is my song. Do you, can you, will you? Why won't you listen closely? Why won't you take a taxi with me? Why won't you listen closely? Why won't you? Taxi with me Whilst is getting ready, I just want to say um, about my mum, who was um, amazing at about 10 o'clock at night, bringing lasagna on the actual day of The Voice. That was pretty epic. And basically, my recording, I did it all by MIDI sequences. And then the rest of the band here, lovely band, which have gotten down there too, um, have played it for me, which is really good. Anyway, this is Sia. Hello. Wait, a response. I haven't had that before. <laughs> okay, this next song isn't really a song. It's called Vocal Science and it's an ambient track. Um, I wrote it because when Branwen first came up to me and said, The theme is voice, what are you going to do? I thought of my friend who is uh, going off to study linguistics at uni next year. And he's got loads of textbooks that he likes to read to us. 
because he's strange like that. <laughs> and um, a bit that he did read was about the science and your vocal organs and what goes on when you speak. And I thought that would be really interesting to put into a track. So I borrowed all of his textbooks and trawled through all of them, finding the bits that I liked, and uh, wrote them all down. And I'm going to get Felix to read them all and put my music around it, I suppose. That's what I did. And I also put Meg and Erin into a vocal booth together and uh, made them make strange noises and got loads and loads of audio and cut it down into tiny little samples like this one. <laughs> and that one. And uh, play them throughout the track. And yeah, this is kind of what it sounds like. The parts of the body used in the production of speech are called the vocal speech, organs, speech, speech, and there are more of them than you might expect. Expect, expect, expect. We have to take into account the lungs <laughs> and the mouth. Inside the mouth, the mouth we must distinguish the lips, the, lips, the tongue, <laughs> the teeth, the roof of the mouth, or the palate, and the fleshy appendage hanging down at the very back of the throat. Of the throat, 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 throat. In the upper part, we find the pharynx, <laughs> operating in a very different way from the lower part, the, lower part, the larynx. And within the larynx, we need to recognize the important role of the vocal folds located behind the Adam's apple. The space between the vocal folds is known as the glottis. There is a lot going on at the same time when we speak. The pharynx and the mouth, nose, form a system of hollow areas or cavities known as the vocal tract. When we move the organs in the vocal tract, we alter its shape, and it is this which enables the many different sounds that it produces. Before any sound can be produced at all, it has to be a source of energy. In speech, this takes the form of a stream of air, which, in normal circumstances, is set in motion by the lungs. The lungs act as a kind of bellows, allowing the air to flow inwards and outwards as we breathe. When we speak, we must first inhale, filling our lungs, making our ribcage move upwards and our diaphragm move downwards, thus expanding the chest. We, need, we then exhale, contracting the chest and the lungs, forcing the air out. This is the air that we use for conversation. The amount of air that we use increases to some extent when speech becomes loud or effortful, as in shouting, singing, public speaking, and producing a stage whisper. Before we can speak, lung air must be converted into audible vibrations. And to do this, we use the various organs in the vocal tract. The most important source of vibrations for the production of speech sounds is in the lower region of the tract, the larynx. The larynx is a tube consisting of cartilages with connecting ligaments and membranes within which are housed two bands of muscular tubes known as the vocal folds or cords. The front part of the larynx is a thyroid, which is a shield-like cartilage. This and two other cartilages work together and their movements help control the way that the vocal cords vibrate. To make pitch movement, each pulse of vibrations represents a single opening and closing of the movement of the vocal folds. The pitch of the voice is determined by how many times a second this action is repeated. E.g., the more vibrations a second, the higher the pitch of sound. An individual is able to alter the frequency of the vocal fold vibrations within certain limits to produce variations of pitch and loudness, which convey contrast of meaning. This linguistic use of pitch and dynamic is described in such terms as intonation, stress, tone, and rhythm. Once the airstream passes through the larynx, it then enters a long tubular structure known as the vocal tract. Here it is affected by the actions of several mobile vocal organs, in particular by the tongue, soft palate, and lips, which work together to make a wide range of speech sounds. The production of different speech sounds through the use of organs is known as articulation. That noise means the guitar has gone to bed now. Um, this next song is uh, another, um, another song that features me and Ollie and Rachel on drums back there. Um, and this time, instead of collaborating with Amy like we did on the first song, we collaborated with Sia. Um, this song's called uh, 
Last Chance. And, um, and we recorded a quick demo. Um, to record the demo, we didn't want to set up the entire drum kit because that takes a long time and putting microphones around it. Um, so Ollie got creative and made percussive sounds using um, bits of furniture, chairs, desks, whatever, um, which sounded reasonably interesting. Um, but it was good enough to give to Sia, and then she put together some lyrics, as she will now explain. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I started the lyric writing process over Facebook, because that is the only way that anyone should ever write lyrics. And uh, it involved me getting really, really overexcited every time I found a new line, and rushing to post it on Bramwen's wall, on her Facebook and uh, looking for approval. And yeah. And then when it came to doing the chorus, um, I didn't really know what to do because I've never been very good at catchy choruses, which is why I did an ambient track to start with. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we came up with 10 brainstorm words and thought, well, we'll flesh them out later, it'll be fine. And. Uh, when it came to it, we didn't know how to flesh them out, so we rearranged the order of them and repeated them, and it worked. So that's what we've done, and we've kept it like that. And uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. 
Thank you. I was looking for who I'm supposed to hand the microphone to then, but it's me. <laughs> and him, when he's finished his skittles. Um, <laughs> we're having a skittle crisis. Um, <laughs> this next track is called Enough is Enough, and um, the music was written by Ollie. but he's shy. And uh, the lyrics were written by Amy and Rupert. Um, I remember listening to Rupert recording his vocals to this and everyone was just wowed by it. Everyone stopped what they were doing and went around to listen. And it was really good. And then uh, after they'd finished that, Ollie came up to me and said, will you do the backing vocals? And I said, yeah, all right. He said it was gonna be easy and we were there for half an hour and uh, more than that, apparently. And uh, we had an audience as well, but just to laugh at me not being able to hit the right notes. And yeah, as you've already heard, Rupert's not here, so Zach will be singing it tonight. And uh, Ollie is going to talk and he's going to tell you how he made the backing track. <laughs> <laughs> The, um, <laughs> the only interesting story is that the bass line, I couldn't play it on the record because I wasn't that good. So I did it like each bar because it hasn't got a note on the one. So it's like kind of thing. So I would play the bar, stop the tape, play the next one, stop the tape. So then, when it turned out we'd have to do the album live, I had to learn how to do it. And I kind of have now. I'd just like to say I really like the way Ollie said, stop the tape. We don't use tape anymore. my best. I searched for a while for an answer to put your mind at rest. But when I told you my idea, you just got up and left. I'm trying to talk to you, help you. What are you? Deaf? I tried for weeks to get in touch, but love was not much. I thought, oh my god, she's holding a grudge. Wait, that doesn't make sense, but trying to help you out. You hadn't talked to me in weeks, I was starting to doubt. Well, you messed it up now. Look at you, I hope you're proud. You may as well shout out loud, hey, I'm gonna take somebody down. Shut up, fool, you look like a clown. Don't you know that everyone's staring at you with a frown? If only you listen instead of taking off. None of this would have happened if you would have been the wrong. If only you listen instead of taking off. But now I've had it, enough is enough.
hearing the star tone I learned a lot over the years about love and respect But nothing could prepare me for this I hadn't seen this yet What the hell is going on? You all used to love me I missed you so much But now you just hate me What has changed so much over the years That I'm no longer welcome? Is it not enough that I just want to help them? I love what I do And that's all that really matters Why should I have to conform to what you think matters? In my life, not yours At least I've got one fan. This next song um, I wrote, and I wrote it about a week before the vocals, um, the voice session. Um, by that stage, I had a pretty good idea of what we were going to have music-wise, and it was quite diverse, and I felt that we needed some more kind of straight-up songs. So I thought, I'll write a fairly simple song. Um, it actually didn't turn out very simple because it kept having more and more layers added to it, um, as you'll hear. Uh, the original inspiration for the song was from Amy and Rupert because they had been in my year 13 class and I loved the way their voices sounded together. They had sung together in a couple of school concerts and I just thought they needed to be recorded together. So I wrote the song as a duet for them. Um, sadly, Rupert's not here, as you know, um, but Sia's going to sing Rupert's part because it's kind of, it's not like a couple's duet. It's uh, not that it would matter if it was, um, but it's... It's kind of about the person inside you, um, the voice that's telling you what to do um, all the time. Um, I also wanted to give Jake, who's down there, another chance to do a, a tearing guitar solo because he's so good at doing tearing guitar solos. So there's a little Jake slot in the middle, which I think there should be in most songs, actually. Um, and also, you can see where the layers are coming in now. Um, I knew Meg was coming to do voice, and I know she's an amazing cellist, so I wanted to give... Uh, a song with cello in it. So that's why we've got the cello tonight, um, which I'm really excited about. So um, I'm talking way too much. So here is Invisible. can feel beyond my heart My secret light in the dark Always coasting, she's my guide She's on my side She is present out of sight Hear her singing
Okay, hi everybody. <laughs> uh, this next song started with an idea I had on guitar, and then I sort of took it home and developed it because voice gave me something to use it for. And I remember practicing in school lunch times in the drum room, and when I was recording, I remember doing guitar solos at stupid o'clock in the morning. But here's Greg on how he did the lyrics. Hello. Yeah, with the lyrics, as Jake said, he was practicing in the drum room. So for a copy of the track so that I could write the lyrics, I got a recording on my phone of him practicing in the drum room, which is um, good quality. Um, throughout the night, I had a show in the evening, and I was also in a sling, and I managed to forget the lyrics on the day, so I had to rewrite them, so that was good fun. And... Um, I think somewhere in between six at night and six in the morning, we got all the lyrics done in about two takes. So this is Stand Up.
Hello again. Um, this next track is First Thoughts, and like Sia's one, it's an ambient track. I always forget how to describe an ambient track, but um, it's pretty much all electronic sounds and then a load of samples. <laughs> Um, as I said, I was in a sling and had a show in the middle of voice, so I didn't, I had a long time to record it, but I was pretty lazy. So, um, <laughs> I was doing about half an hour on, an hour off, probably more out off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I started the track, but when it was voice, I decided I want just lots of what people think voice is. Um, it took me a long time to get people to sample. No one was willing to go into the vocal booth, apart from Suzanne, who made help with this track, as well as lovely lasagna, so she's a star. Um, eventually, I got enough people in, but instead of using those samples on tonight, uh, we're using members of the voice team as the samples live. And... Um, yeah, probably talking too much, but we've got effects on the voice and stuff, like delays and stuff. Um, this is First Thoughts, hope you enjoy. What do you think when I say voice? Making noises with your larynx. Making noises with your larynx. Making noises with your larynx. Freedom of speech. Freedom of freedom speech. speech. Freedom of freedom speech. speech. Freedom of freedom 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 speech
sitting on show You stay in your shell and I'll break out of mine I'll make my voice heard, remembered for all time to the end of the show nearly. Be oh. Before we play the last song, um, and I hand over to Felix to introduce it, I'd just like to say a couple of thank yous, um, particularly to uh, Harry Upton, who's sitting up on the brave box up there. He's done, <laughs> he's done an amazing job on the sound, and uh, thank you, Harry. Also, behind him in the, in the box box is Neil and Zoe. Um, Neil, painted the backdrop for us. It took hours and hours and hours. And Zoe and Neil have been doing the lights, and neither of them have done lights before, am I right in saying that? And they've done an amazing job, I think you'll agree. Um, I'd also like to thank um, everyone from Attic uh, for letting us use their amazing theatre. It's a really good place to do a gig. Um, I'd like to thank Derry and Harvey, who are doing um, sterling duties on the film cameras. Um, but. Most of all, I'd like to thank these talented guys behind me because they've inspired me so much in, well, forever. But particularly during the last year and a half, um, the 24-hour session was an incredible experience for all of us. Um, and this concert has been, like, amazing to put together. And uh, thank you, guys. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to... I'm now going to hand over to Felix to introduce the last song. Um, believe it or not, I'm just not residential tambourine man. I wrote the song, originally dubbed The Voice of Glastonbury, which was um, changed to The Voice of Summer to make it slightly more accessible. Um, the simplicity of the track on the album, in the sense that it's just vocals and guitar, can partly be attributed to um, lack of resources and time. And doing it live is really giving me the opportunity to sort of pad out the uh, mid late a bit, make it a bit more lively. One thing that we've done we decided to add on, um, in the recording session was a hidden track exactly 24 seconds after the finish of my song. So if you could all resist the urge to jump up and shout and scream at the end of my, when I finish, to give us 24 seconds of silence, that'd be much appreciated. Cheers. miles, carrying my backpack and a smile, some memories to be told, and a hand to hold, and now we're swarming souls whose stories are untold, there's people to be praised, and there's memories to be made, there's photos to be treasured, and there's nights to be remembered, there's songs to be sung, 
So just forget the things that need to be done. to be treasured, a life to be remembered. It's a world to wonder, so why not bother? There's people to meet and friends to greet. There's guests to host and deeds to toast. There's food to be tasted and money to be wasted. So put life in your pocket, leave your door and get to the dance floor.
Screaming now 